There's an anointing of God. It's raw, it's simple, it's bold, it's direct, it's powerful, and it's backed up supernaturally by all the signs. Jesus said, these are the signs that will follow you. Rocky's got all those signs. I like Errol Flynn as an actor. So I was curious, I read his book, it was called My Wicked, Wicked Ways by Earl Flynn, it was an autobiography. And whatever situation he found himself in, he was the leader. So I thought that was a good example, even though he was a terrible example as a person. Like one time I was um, homeless, so I was sleeping in my car, I had a job in Long Island, I was just like temporary labor. So I just went to the job really early, and they thought I was the foreman. So the way Earl Flynn did it was, he goes, yeah, so that's what I did. I needed to live the experience of the Bible. So Jesus chose people of the sea. So a friend of mine came and got me and said they needed some, a deckhand on a boat. So then I go, okay, I'll be a captain. I saw a row of bulldozers with guys with automatic weapons push a whole little village, church and all, into a ravine. And so I went there to help them. You see on TV, people go, well, okay, we need blankets and food. They didn't tell me they wanted blanket food. They wanted guns. I mean, they were ticked off. So I had guns. So I said, what do you got? They go, we got marijuana. I mean, that was Oaxaca. The Mexican authorities took a dim view of international drug trading, guns, and all that kind of stuff. So from there, I got sentenced to prison. For what? For conspiracy to overthrow the national government, international drug smuggling, and you know, some lesser crimes. What was the sentence? Life in prison. Rocky actually got off easy because his comrades were tortured and hung. And his miraculous deliverance and restoration are not only the hook, but one of three storylines that will be developed in the film. But I can tell you this, you can't make this stuff up. I was sitting in church. I noticed one particularly tall guy was just sobbing and no one was praying with him, so I left my seat and I put my hand on his shoulder. So I remember looking and go, what do you do? He goes, well, I'm a wild animal trainer at the San Diego Zoo. And I remember thinking, wow, man, he kind of, you know, he can understand me. So I was focused more as maybe an older brother in the Lord on, on focusing, what is God doing in your life now? And then the next thing I know, he's, he's leaving for Honduras. I've been there. It is a... It's a swamp. <laughs> he lived in a swamp. Picture Yoda. He is in first. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't wait. He is bold. He's like Joshua. He's ready to take the land. God knew that, and he knew the purpose and plan he had for his life, and he knew just who would balance him. You know, everything that Rocky is not, uh, background, educated, um, academic, Yoska is. And at that time, it, it had been a war zone. And she was at home, absolutely at home in this environment. My parents were missionaries sent out from the Dutch Reformed Church in Canada. They went to Irianjaya, and that's where my brother and I were born. Our toys were bow and arrows. We'd kick up a pie and shoot a bow and arrow in it. Uh, we'd make our own spears, go hunting uh, on each other. So I thought, okay, well, this is a strange guy, but then later on, we started to get to know each other. In about three weeks, I think it was, I think we got engaged. Every single day at lunch, he would spend time reading five chapters out of the Bible. I thought, wow, it's a man after, after God. So when did he uh, reveal the whole pirate thing? Was that before you got engaged or after you got no, engaged? No, that was after. That was after we got married. The idea that a child in the street, a 14-year-old or 8-year-old kid, once they're in the street, the idea that they mainstream back, that never, we never saw that one time. 
So it was so sad, so I'm thinking, okay, how can we prevent this from happening? Woven into the fabric of every authentic testimony is the gospel. So the second and main storyline will be the incredible true life adventures of Rocky and Yoska. From their improbable meeting to their trials in Bolivia, where against all odds, they developed one of the most effective outreaches for at-risk children in the world, Mission Generation. We are going to need to teach children principles, because if you teach children principles, then the result will be values. For example, love. For God so loved the world, he gave. So love is to give. It's a decision you make to give the best you have for the well-being of another person. It has nothing to do with the circumstances. It has nothing to do with the other person. 80% less teenage pregnancies in the school we were working in. When that happened, we got a huge breakthrough with government. And they basically gave us a accreditation. There'd never been a program accredited at a national level ever in the history of the country. That just has to be God-inspired. God speaking to Yoska, she's a student of the Bible. She is a processor and she takes kind of his wild, rough imagination uh, and gifts and anointing and, he, and she puts it in a divine order. And then Rocky's going in and doing discipleship behind that and he's using the teachers because the, it's not just the kids responding, the teachers are responding. And it becomes cool to behave yourself and make good grades instead of misbehave, drink and do bad things when the cool factor shifts. You got church, man. You got the body of Christ right there. It's a whole nother paradigm shift. I think in my experience in seeing the curriculum kind of on a street level, I've seen that it's, it is bigger than just students realizing that they have a moral obligation before God to live a certain way. And I think that that's a byproduct of hope that you and I find in having a relationship with Jesus, is that we realize that we're now capable of being more than we ever could be. Which brings us to the subtext, or what the film is really about the kids. The third storyline will follow individual children as they are introduced to the seven principles and the subsequent impact on their lives and families. And then we're seeing the impact and trajectory of those lives now shaping, because they're being changed, now shaping entire communities, which has been so impressive to see and so unique. C.S. Lewis said, look, we have to learn how to work behind enemy lines. Now, some of my past of being a smuggler and, you know, kind of the joke of pirate stuff, I learned how to operate in a covert way. It won't just impact believers. It's something you go, you gotta see this. You gotta, you gotta hear about these guys. It will blow your mind. But the biggest news for us is that it's coming to the United States because once it's here, then it becomes even more desirable for other countries. All three storylines will converge at the conclusion, and it will be obvious to everyone that all three are powered and hinge on exactly the same thing. Jesus told stories. In a beautiful way, Rocky and Yoska are a living story, a true story, and a powerful story of transformation. Every needed component of a classic story is already baked into the plot of Pirate School. The Stelle for Best Feature Documentary goes to The Love Story of Leonard Knight. And I know a little bit about this because my last film won five film festivals. It was official selection in 14 film festivals, half Christian and half secular, and it was nominated Best Documentary in every one. And that's because all people are drawn to story. And once you get that going and you get them into a relationship with the king, of the kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ, everything else will follow. This is like a huge magic key to the kingdom, you know, country after country, and literally to reach continent after continent. Oh my gosh, what have I done? No, 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 no. My parents said that, but I didn't. <laughs>